Right, hello there ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be working on this Nintendo Switch Lite, and this particular console has been sent in because, and I quote, we tried to plug it in and we could smell burning. And that only tells me one thing, and that is that there's an incredibly big short on the motherboard. So, let's plug it in and see what's happening with it. Wow, that's, uh, that's drawing a lot of current. 7.48 amps. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can smell burning. And, yeah, that cable's getting hot. That is... Uh, that's a pretty big short. Okay, this is going to be a very interesting one. 7.5 amps, and that's, coming, that's pulling 7.5 amps from my PC. This USB cable is plugged into my computer not into any kind of external power source. It's plugged into my computer. It shouldn't even be able to draw that kind of current. That is an incredibly high current draw, and I have never seen anything like that. 6.89 amps. 3.11 volts. So it's got a big voltage drop. And yeah, I can... I can I can definitely smell that. That's uh, that's definitely the smell of a burning PCB. So let's take this apart and let's see what we can do about getting this working. Um, that cable is incredibly hot. Incredibly, incredibly hot. All right, let's take this apart. We're going to need to see what's going on with this. And I'm going to say it probably, it's probably not going to be good. It smells like burning PCB. It's probably not going to be a good outcome for this one but that is an incredibly high power draw something is definitely not right here and hopefully we can get it working but it doesn't look promising when it's drawing that kind of current it's probably fried something inside but we'll see let's take it apart and let's see what's happening with it shall we that shouldn't even be possible from the PC USB ports. I'm honestly surprised that didn't shut my computer down. I've never seen anything like this before. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do is if, for example, I see something that I know I'm not going to be able to fix straight away, what I'm going to do is determine this no fix and, and post this video anyway. Um, it honestly doesn't look promising. I'm not sure what to expect when I get inside this, I'll be honest. I'm honestly not sure what to expect. It looks absolutely pristine. Oh. Oh yeah, I can smell that. Oh wow. Wow, I can smell that. That, that smells pretty bad, I'm going to be honest. And this is a very well looked after console. It's virtually pristine. There is something interesting to note here. Uh, it looks like we have got some liquid damage just here. So that is one thing to note. Okay. So what we need to do is figure out exactly where that burning smell is coming from. And it looks pristine. Okay, Wi-Fi area looks absolutely fine. Let's leave that shield off. Let's plug it back in and see if I can find it. Oh, 
Okay. It looks like it's an internal short on the actual USB port. All right, let's get this under the microscope and we'll see if we can figure out what's going on with the port. It feels like the port is what's getting hot. So let's have a look under the scope. And yep, it's not going to come across very well on camera. But I can see damage inside that port. Uh, yeah, definitely damage inside the port. And corrosion as well. Okay. Right, okay. So now I know roughly what's going on. So what it looks like to me is that the console has suffered liquid damage and it caused a short on the USB port itself. So if there's an internal short on the USB port, then it's basically going to draw as much current as it can possibly pull because there's no resistance. You know, it's a direct short, it's a dead short, there's no traces in between, it's just a metal on metal short. And that's what's going to be causing the very high current draw. I've got a feeling that the power management IC is going to be damaged as well, just given the fact that the console itself is drawing such high current. Uh, it's probably fried the M92 T36 chip, which isn't that much of a problem if it's just that chip, or if it's just the port, it shouldn't be too much of a big deal to fix, but it just depends whether it's done any more damage in the process. So let's get the heat sink off. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the board out, and then I'm going to see if I can see any obvious signs of damage on the board itself. Okay, so one thing we need to be wary of when we're taking these consoles apart is this button here. So I always take this button out of the chassis because there's a spring here and what tends to happen is as we're moving about on the desk and doing what we're doing with the console, the vibrations are going to knock this spring out and it's going to go basically off to another world. So I always take that but I always take that button out with the spring just to make sure I don't lose it because we don't want to end up losing that spring and having to replace more parts when if and when we do get this working or even if we don't get it working we'd still have to replace that spring. So they do tend to disappear into another world. So just be mindful of that if you are taking a Nintendo Switch lights apart. Okay, so the board's out of the case now. So we can work on just the board. And we can basically hope that there's no further damage. But we'll see. Right, so I'm going to plug it back in again and just see what's going on. Okay, yeah, okay. So just the port is getting hot. And the burning smell is definitely coming from the port. Right. Okay, that's good news because nothing else is getting hot by the feel of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop under the microscope and just do some diagnostics with the multimeter on these two chips here. So these two chips are the M92 T36, which is the power management IC, and BQ24193, which is the battery management IC. And these are typically what go when we get charging issues. So I'm going to pop the board under the microscope and I'll do some diagnostics on these two chips and just see if we've got an issue with them just so we know in advance whether we're going to need to change them or not. Okay, so here we have the M92 T36 and also the BQ24193. So these are both the power management and the battery management ICs. And like I said, these typically go when we get damage on the charging port. 
So I'm just going to test these quickly because it was very high current draw. So I've got my multimeter into beat mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop one probe on ground. In this case, I'm going to use the charging port itself. And I'm just going to check some of these capacitors around the chips just for shorts. Um, BQ seems fine. And so does M92 T36. So they actually seem fine, which is very surprising to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this port off. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hang the board over the edge of the table. And then I'm going to use hot air on its own just to remove the port. I'm going to use the heating up from underneath method and basically allow this port to drop out on its own. I'm going to set my hot air to 480 degrees Celsius and my airflow is going to be set to 40%. And I'm just going to heat up the area until we melt the solder underneath. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my tweezers. So I'm going to keep my tweezers on the port and I'm not going to let this drop out on its own. Not before I feel like it's ready. Okay, so the port has dropped. So we wait 10 seconds. And then lift off the port. And I'm honestly going to be surprised if there's no damage on the board itself. Not because of the traces. Because the traces, as you can see from that port there, there's no damage to those traces. I'm going to be surprised if there's no damage because of the amount of heat that was being generated. Um, surprisingly, it looks absolutely fine. It does look fine. So, I think what's happened here is a little bit of water's got inside the port. And that's possibly damaged the port by corroding it, uh, causing it to short the pins together. And then the port's been damaged as well. So that's what it looks like to happen to me. I can't be 100% sure, but that's at least what it looks like. Alright, so the first thing I want to do is just add some flux. Um, flux is just going to help the solder to flow. I'm going to add some flux and add some to the bottom legs as well. And then I'm going to replace the solder that's on here with some leaded solder. And I'm going to say something now because I've been getting a few comments about it lately. About people questioning the fact that I don't wick away the pads. And I will never ever be seen wicking the pads on a Nintendo Switch. Not the ones that are on the port itself. The ground legs are fine. But the ones on the port themselves are very very weak. And they... And not they're not designed to be wicked let's put it that way um by wicking we can lift the traces off the board and we don't want to do that because then we've got to deal with 0.3 millimeter trace repair and that's certainly not a fun job to do so we're not going to be wicking away the old solder we're just going to replace the solder with fresh leaded solder and what that's going to do is it's going to change the composition of the solder basically and allow us to lower the melting temperature for when we reinstall the port. So that's going to be the plan. So I've got some fresh leaded solder. And as you can see, I'm just going around in a circle. I'm going to replace the solder that's on the ground legs as well, if I can. And same for these ones down here as well. Okay, and you'll notice I went around in a circular motion there. That was so as I didn't put any pressure on the pads themselves. Just lightly going around in a circular motion and replace the solder that's on there. So what I'm going to do now is basically wick away the ground legs. 
so I'm going to flip the board around and I'm also going to replace the solder that's on the ground legs from the back as well just to get a nice even mix there we go so that should be good enough so let's wick away these pads So wicking away from the back means I haven't got to go anywhere near the pads themselves and just makes it a little bit easier and less risky of causing damage. So now I'm going to clean up the back of the board. So I'm using some isopropyl alcohol with a toothbrush to clean up. And I'm going to do the same for the other side of the board as well. Just get rid of that burnt flux and then I can inspect the pads to make sure that we don't have any damage, but we shouldn't have. Should be absolutely fine. I am quite surprised that there's not been a lot more damage caused to the board. Okay, let's just use some hot air and dry the area off. Okay, let's add some more flux. Um, before I do anything, I'm just going to get rid of this last little bit of uh, the solder that's on that ground leg there just to make sure that they're nice and clean ideally I don't really want to be having to heat up the ground legs as well as the pads themselves because that way then it's not really going to be as easy to install a port so what I like to do is have the ground legs empty and that way then I can just drop a port on and just heat up the pads themselves to install the new port so that's nice and clean so again a light circular motion just make sure we've got enough solder on those bottom pads because we can access the top row but we can't access the bottom row once the port's in place so make sure there's enough solder there and then and then we shouldn't have a problem when it comes to flowing a new port on so for the port we're going to be using a normal nintendo switch port as you can see here it's just a standard port but we're going to need to modify the port by using the Dremel and basically shave off the edge because we can't actually buy official Nintendo Switch Lite ports what we do have to do is basically modify the existing ports that we can get and make them fit the Nintendo Switch Lite so it's a bit of a nightmare but unfortunately that's that's just the way that we have to do it so what I do want to do is protect the battery connector because we've got to use heat on this area now and the battery connector is obviously plastic. We don't want to melt that connector because otherwise we're not going to be able to plug the battery in. So what I'm going to do is just put some Kapton tape around it just to provide it that little bit more protection. And what I'm also going to do as well is I'm going to pop a coin just over here just to try and protect it a little bit more so I'll pop a coin there that's going to act that's going to act as a heat sink and protect the area and then I'm going to take my USB port and I'm going to hold it in the tweezers like this and I'm just going to heat up the area first and by doing it that way what that's going to do is it's going to melt the solder that's on the pads before we drop the port on and hopefully it should protect the port and stop us damaging the port so I've got my hot air set to 440 degrees Celsius now and I'm going to just come in with the heat and just keep going around in a circular motion. Just keep the airflow moving. Just nudge the port into place. press and hold and that should be soldered and as you can see there there's no damage to that plastic connector because I've protected it not only with heat resistant tape but also with the coin as well and that port looks nicely aligned 
So let me just give these another test. And it does need another reflob. I'm going to pop the coin over again. We shouldn't really need the capped on tape. That was just a uh, because I had some lying around. Let's add some flux. Let's just touch up these pins a little bit. So I'll add some flux there. And I'm going to come in with the soldering iron and just touch the pins up on the back. The bottom one should be soldered, but there's a couple of the top ones still loose. Okay, so those are touched up then. So let's clean the board, get rid of the flux. And let's dry it off. Awesome. Okay, that seems fine. That seems absolutely perfect. So let's just solder these back legs in then, shall we? Okay. Should be nice and secure. And finally, I'm just going to clean out the port itself. Just make sure that there's no flux in there. And we should be good to test. Hopefully that's all that it needs. I'm just going to dry the isopropyl alcohol off. And there we go. So hopefully the, all we need to do is put the port in. So let's see now if it's going to charge a battery. So the way I'm going to do that is just by plugging the battery in on its own and then hook up the switch to the USB charger and let's see what kind of current it draws. Four point eighty nine volts, that's good. Zero amps, that's bad. So we're now getting zero amps current draw. Oh, hang on. 17. That's good. 19. So the battery could have been in sleep mode. And I think that's what's happened. I think the battery was in sleep mode. Okay. Right. So... Because I believe the battery's in sleep mode, I'm going to pop the multimeter on, and I'll pop the multimeter on screen as well. Okay, so you can see we've got the multimeter on the screen then. So what I'm going to do is just test the battery itself and just see what kind of voltage it's on right now. Two point seven seven volts. So that is very dead. That is very dead indeed. So that's why we wasn't getting any current draw to start with. All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is just leave this to charge and see if it starts to draw a normal current. So the current we're looking for is around 0.4 amps, maybe 0.3. Actually what we could do rather than wait for that and hope it's charging is we could plug in the LCD and the backlight and just see if anything's coming up on the screen. But 0.17 amps would tell me that it's trickle charging the battery for safety reasons, and that's perfectly normal. So hopefully that is the case. So what I'm going to do is just basically 
hook up some essential parts and the essential parts are literally just going to be the backlight and the LCD itself so the, for the backlight we need to hook up this thing here but first we need to plug the battery in so what I'll do first is just hook up the LCD and just make sure that we're not going to cause any issues we don't, never want to plug in the LCD while the battery is plugged in even if it is completely dead that is a big no no okay so plug in the battery so the big problem here is that we have to plug the ribbon in for this side after we plug the battery in which is a pain in the back side it really is for whatever reason Nintendo design, decided to design it that way but there's nothing we can do it has to be done unfortunately okay so let's plug in so let's plug in a charger now then and even if it is charging we're not done we do need to test a few things and we also need to modify the port and yes that's working that's absolutely fantastic so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to plug this into my 15 volt official Nintendo switch charger to charge this up as fast as possible it's going to take about 25 minutes so basically I'm going to leave it to charge until it turns on and fingers crossed we haven't got any more issues so I'll pause the video for a, minute, for a minute and hopefully when we come back it'll be charged and turned it on and we're back so this is charged up to 6% and it appears to be working now so all that's left to do now is to modify the port and the way that we're going to need to do that is using a Dremel so what we need to do is we need to basically shorten the port and flush it off so as it's flush with the chassis and obviously you need a Dremel for this but it's not too difficult if you have a Dremel you can use a hand file but I prefer to use a Dremel just because it's much quicker okay so I've got the Dremel here with a fairly smooth bit it's not a rough bit and I'm just gonna unplug this and then I'm going to get the battery disconnected so like I said we need to basically Dremel this port until it's flush with the chassis so I'm actually going to remove it from the case for that and in fairness it needs to be removed anyway because we need to be able to put the buttons and things back in so either way it's the motherboard's got to come back out of the chassis anyway but by doing it out of the chassis it means we don't risk damaging the plastics on the console itself it doesn't really matter what it looks like on the outside of the port it's what it looks like to the customer and if we damage the case then we've got to pay for it so what I'm going to do is just basically drum all this away until it's flush with the board and it's basically until it's flush with this second line here so I'm going to do that and I'll fast forward through most of this because the Dremel's pretty loud and we don't really want that kind of noise blasting through your speakers so I'll fast, for I'll fast forward through most of it I'm going to use a quite low setting, pretty much the lowest setting I've got As we can see the port is pretty much flush and that should be more than enough to be able to get this to fit if we do, if it's not if we haven't dremeled enough of the port away it'll bulge out inside the case and obviously we don't want that because we want it to look as good as new so 
what I'm going to do before I actually put this back together and test fit it is I'm going to clean out the port again and make sure that we've got no metal shards inside. So I'm just going to use some isopropyl alcohol once again because if we've got metal shards inside then it's going to have exactly the same problem that we had before we changed the port and that's going to be that the pins are going to be shorting out together and we don't want that because then we've just wasted all that time. So I'm just going to give it a good clean, make sure it's nice and clean. And that should be good to go. So let's just measure that and compare against the old port. And it's almost perfect. It's not perfect, but it's almost the perfect size. Almost. It's not absolutely perfect, but it should be more than enough. So, let's cross our fingers and hope now that we can install this port properly. So what I'm going to do is just start putting everything back together. And I'm going to make sure that the buttons are all aligned as well. Okay, and we're ready for test fitting now. Fingers crossed this is actually going to fit. And that we haven't got to take it all back apart. These are a bit of a pain to take apart compared to the normal switch. And I'm not 100% sure on screw locations, so... Yeah, well, I mean, I do know where they go, but it's just... Uh, I don't know them... You know, I couldn't run them out in my head like I can with the Nintendo Switch screws so it's uh, they're a little bit different let's, let's put it that way okay so time for the moment of truth and um, nope there's still a small bulge uh, okay so still a small bulge so this is what I mean so you can see a small bulge there where the port is not quite the right size and if I had to gamble I would say it's this top corner which is causing that so I should be able to do that while it's in the case as long as I'm very careful I mean I've done it inside the case while it's been inside the case before but I don't like to do it but I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be too much of a risk to basically just flush off a tiny bit more. Um, obviously the, ma the majority of it you don't want to but a tiny bit should be fine. That's it. That's got it. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. So I'll still need to screw it down, obviously. But that looks good. I do need to clean it as well. Okay, and yeah, that lines up, uh, I think that's probably about as best as I'm going to get it. I'm not going to get it absolutely spot on, but I think that's about as best as I'm going to get it. You can see a very, very slight little bulge there, but nothing nothing that's going to cause it any problems. Uh, and I don't think the customer is going to be unhappy with that. If he is, I mean, I'll show it to him. I'll explain why it's there and uh, if he's unhappy then I'll come back and do it again but I think that's going to be absolutely fine. Obviously 
there's going to be no warranty on this thing now anyway. I'll just clean out that port again and test and make sure it charges. So let's turn it on using the power button because that gives us a chance to test that and that's working absolutely fine. And this screen this screen will get cleaned before it goes back as well just for the uh, just for the record there. Uh, a lot of people complain about the screens having flux on them, but they do get cleaned before they go back to the customer. And there you go. So we are now charging, and it's charging at 0.42 amps. 0.46. It'll jump around. Right, let's turn the volume up. So let's just run a couple of tests. Then. So I'm going to install a game. Or rather, I'm going to pop a game in and just make sure it reads. And it does. It reads Pokemon Sword. That's fantastic. So, then we're going to go to Settings. And I'm going to go to Data Management, Software. And we're going to remove the software that we've just installed. Okay. So, let's go back to the Settings now. Uh, let's test the internet, make sure that that works. And there is a hidden message there if you are new to the channel. The Wi Fi password is telling you the next steps, and you can do that by pressing the button down below. Thank you. There we go. Excellent. So internet works and a game card reader works. Let's test let's just test the touch screen. Excellent. Let's test the buttons. And um, X is a little bit dodgy. It worked once, but then it hasn't worked a second time. Hmm. Alright, it is working, but it's just dodgy. So I'm going to need to clean that, but I'll do that off camera. Uh, the video is going on a little bit now, so uh, I will clean it. I'll sort it out. But uh, yeah, other than that, it works fine. Um, one thing I need to do is just clean off that but clean out that button and sort that out. Uh, I'll get that sorted and uh, other than that this is done. Okay, so before we finish up, let's just test the charging port both sides of the charger. So console battery 8%. And then let's flip the charger around. And console battery 8%. So this is charging absolutely fine on both sides of the port. So let's just summarise on this one then. So this one was sent in because the customer could smell burning. Um, when I plugged it into the USB port on the computer, it was drawing an incredible 8 amps from the USB port, which theoretically should not be possible. But somehow it was according to this meter. And to be honest, I trust the meter. I don't think it, I don't think it was lying to me in any way. It was drawing it was drawing eight amps from the USB port. Even Windows didn't detect that something was wrong, and it should have done. But that was down to a short inside the USB port. It was getting incredibly hot, and it almost burnt out my cables. But by replacing the port and by modifying that port to, for it to fit in the Nintendo Switch Lite, we was able to get this console working again, and the customer is going to be happy. So. Other than that, that's going to be it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I will always do my best to answer them. And if you need to organise your own repair, then be sure to check out the contact details in the description for ways to contact me about your device. If you like what you see and you want to see more repair videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button down there somewhere and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified every time that I upload. I also now have channel members, so if you do want to support the channel, then you can for as little as $1.99 per month. Just click on the join button down below and you can become a channel member. All channel members get early access to all of my videos. But that's going to be it for this one. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, see you later. Bye for now.